There are two boats that people buy a lot of. They're for more than just lake sailing though. Being near 40 feet, they're a little bit much for those mom and pop marinas and yacht clubs. They're weekenders, coastal cruisers, and if you want them to be, they're Bahamas and Caribbean island hoppers. And well, they came from the same factory, designed by the same garçon even. One of them's two feet bigger and two feet worse. This week we're talking about the Big Beneteau's big problems. Obviously, I get called a Beneteau fanboy from time to time, but I don't own one. I likely never will, and definitely not a 393, which we'll be talking about today. That's the poster child for 40-foot white plastic island hopping production boats if you were to take a peek down in the islands right now. The 393 is like the F-150 of cruising. It's good. It, it's great. But everybody has one, and it has a much bigger problem. It's little brother. First, what is a 393? In a world dominated by 40-foot white plastic boats, it's the most common one. It's a charter boat with three cabins or an owner's boat with two. It's 17,000 pounds, which is Caribbean territory right on the money. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath townhouse without the mortgage. It's a seagoing U-shaped galley, a wraparound dinette, and lots of storage sort of boat. It's got a masthead sloop with plenty of room for a Genoa, a full batten main if you avoid that furler, and a cockpit big enough for your friends' friends. It's even got a sugar scoop, and it's 13 feet wide, carrying that all the way back, so the arch that you'll inevitably build for it should support at least a thousand watts of solar without batting an eye. If you booked a consult with me asking what boat you should buy to sail from, say, Florida to the Exumas and back for under 120 grand between 38 and 42 feet, which is what most people ask me, the easy answer is the Beneteau 393. It just works. So why in the world am I making this video? Because for about 80 grand, that's a whole $40,000 less money you could just buy its little brother, the 373. So what's the difference? What is this $40,000 price difference actually buy you? I said they were made by the same people in the same factory, and they were, designed by the same person. They have almost the same keel, almost the same hull. The 393 is 38 feet long. The little brother, is 37. That's right, don't let the hype fool you. The 373 to 393 sounds like two feet, enough to cure your two foot itis, but it's one feet. Z. And the 393 is older. It came out in 02, little brother, 2004, which coincidentally is when Beneteau was goofing around with engines. The 393 could have come with a Volvo or maybe a Yanmar. I've even seen them with the big red Westerbeak in them. But the 373, being newer, got the gray Yanmar. Thumbs up. The fuel tanks are about the same. The water tanks are pretty close. And performance? Sail area on the big dog is 638 square feet. But little brother got more, 716 squares. PHRF ratings are both near as makes no difference around 125. And comfort ratio, Ted Brewer invented that metric to determine how comfortable a boat is, and anything between 20 and 30 is coastal cruising, the higher being the better. And the big dog scored 24, sort of right in the middle. Little brother netted a 23 and a half. Are you starting to see my point? By almost every metric, these are very close to being the same boat. But here's a 393 for 120 grand, and here's a 373 for 80. There are some livability differences here though. Just looking at two cabin models of the 393, it gets a bigger wraparound saloon, while little brother gets a curved bench. The 393 gets a Pullman stateroom up front with its private bath. The 373 makes do with just a V-berth. 
but the aft cabins are basically the same, the 373 being a little bit tighter. The 393 has a better galley, but the 373 gets a better nav desk. And both of these boats have the same reputation too, fairly well-built production style of boats that do an excellent job of island hopping around the tropics, that's why people buy these things. Both came with air conditioning and furling mass and lots of room for batteries and spare parts. You'd really have to twist my arm here to see why the price difference is so different. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. This has been a quick video, but this was really bothering me and a lot of people buy these boats, so it needs to be discussed. We should really talk about it down in the comments. Do you have one of these boats? What do we need to know? And a big thank you to the patron team. These are people who help me make these videos by giving a couple of bucks an episode to support the mission here, to get more people sailing more easily. I am very amped up to be headed to Miami next week. I'm actually going down, I think, Wednesday to the Miami Boat Show to check out all the sailboats there. And maybe, if I have a spare minute, maybe roam around on the beach or try to go sailing. I hope to see you guys there. Until next week, friends, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down. I love you guys.